um, at a certain degree based on the number of members in the home. Um, they've even talked about using the microwave heating effect via satellite to heat up um, tenement uh, style housing or low income apartment uh, apartments using satellite based microwave heating where instead of having a uh, an air conditioner or a, a gas powered or electrical powered heater they will actually heat up the individuals uh, in these low income houses using microwave energy so he's oh god <laughs> That's, uh, that's horrible. I mean, you know about the health effects in terms of microwaves, right? <laughs> this is no joke. They have actually researched into using this as a possibility. Oh, my God. Well, you know, there we go. Uh, well, I mean, we see, we see the, the cell phones being um, hauled out, so to speak, and, and, and used on a, on a, a daily basis by, 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 by kids and adults alike. And, and, uh, and still the, the, the health effects of it is, is still not pinned down. And, and there's various reports back and forth all the time seem to be fighting in terms of if it's safe or not to use it. But one thing we do know is that it opens the blood-brain barrier if you talk for too long on a cell phone, which means that all your uh, toxic things in your body pretty much can enter into your brain. So we know that it's not good health-wise to, to be exposed to, to microwaves and, and cell phone radiation. So that's another aspect to all of this as well, that we get when we get this grid, so to speak, built up around us. We actually get health effects because of it as well, John. Yeah, I just read an article recently uh, from an individual, and I believe he was in Sweden, um, worked for one of the, um, the cell phone uh, manufacturers. Uh, I, you, you've probably seen the same article. This individual became so sensitive to electromagnetic energy that yes. he, yeah, he moved out into the countryside. He lives in an entire, entirely electronic-free environment and supposedly can, can tell even if someone is walking up his steps uh, with a cell phone on. <laughs> and a lot of the research uh, he has done and a lot of the re research being done through the European Union is showing very deleterious effects with uh, chronic cell phone use. And the thing I find is very amazing is while in Europe they're, they're touting a lot of the dangers of you know, having a cell phone in, 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 if you're a male in your pocket, uh, that it can lower sperm cell counts from the electromagnetic energy being released, brain tumors, acoustic neuromas, uh, eye damage from having it next to your head for too long. But then you look at the studies that are coming out of the United States, they contradict them um, completely. You know, the, the companies that are doing these studies, mostly um, funded by cell phone companies, uh, come out in our country and say, oh, no, that's, there's, there's no damage being done at all. There's no risk. You know, but then you look at the European studies, and they say there is. So, you know, and that goes back to who really is developing this technology originally, and I think it's stemming mostly from here. Absolutely. And uh, by the way, that that uh, the the guy's name there uh, that we talked about briefly is Per Segerbeck. If anyone wants to search for that or find out more information about that, um, and and he lives uh, about seventy five miles northeast of of Stockholm. And I think that in, in certain areas in Sweden, they have. Uh, areas basically set up for people who are uh, el electronically, you know, uh, allergic, as it were, or they're allergic to radio waves and, and it, uh, electronic equipment and things like that. So that's good, at least that there is one, you know, a few options out there. But otherwise, beyond that, to me, it seems like they're building a, a global grid of this as well, because people now these days, they expect global coverage when they, wherever they are in the world, you know, on their cell phone or on their Wi-Fi for their computer, right, John? So that's another area of this as well, that it's a global grid system that is going into place as well. It's exactly it. And that's, uh, you know, part of the problem is in uh, Dr. Rawmaker, who's back on with us now, and I have um, spoken, we focused a lot on what's going on with our children in this country. And I've also spoke with Dr. Nick Begich, uh, who wrote uh, Angels Don't Play This Harp, about uh, indoctrinating the next generation into having zero privacy. Um, we really see this fight against this technology and the fight against a loss of privacy as our latch ditch effort. You know, most of us that are fighting this are in our late 40s, uh, 50s, and 60s. Um, I spoke to Begich about this, and he said, well, you know, the fight really has to, to end with us because uh, the, the kids, I say kids, people 30 and under, they have grew up attached to a cell phone, attached to a computer, putting their entire life on, on Twitter or Facebook or MySpace. They've never known true privacy. And um, when you talk to them about, you know, there was a day when you didn't have a cell phone on you all the time. Your car couldn't be tracked you know, via its OnStar. 
You didn't want everyone to know who your friends were, you know, what you did that day, when you went to the bathroom, when you went to the beach, you know. People are putting all this information on Facebook, um, and, and the kids today really have no concept of what true privacy is. Yeah. Uh, and that leaves it really in our hands to, to be the last bastion of defense against total loss of privacy, because after we're gone, the current generation, they won't know anything different. They won't even know what to combat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a very, very good point. I think uh, the uh, the owner of or, or the founder of, of Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, went out recently and talked about uh, the, the days of, I think it was privacy, basically, are, are over, or, or the, the rules for what that is uh, is now from now on going to be re, rewritten or something like that, you know, which is uh, obviously to, to enforce the statement that you just made, that we're moving into a total different uh, uh, way of dealing with these things. And, and, and for kids these days, it's a, it's a natural process, just as you say, to ex, you know, share their entire lives on, on you know, Facebook or whatever. And in most cases, though, at, at so far, this is the, the tricky part here as well, because in most cases, I believe, the government or, or corporations or whatever couldn't really care less about you, really. But but in certain cases, there are a few targeted individuals here and there. Um, but later on down the road, another effect of this as well is that if all this data is being stored and uh, and saved as well on servers and, and you have backup on, on various uh, locations, then you can later on go back into the record and dig out all the information on one individual if you at that point feels, feel that you want to uh, you know, try to understand who they are, or how how would we approach this person to make them interested in you know A B C whatever what have you, and that's another area of this as well. That although it might not be used against you uh, right now, it could be a date later on in your life when, when it's being used against you. Right, John? Well, uh, I'm going to give a shameless plug here for a show that Don Rawmaker and I do. We we have a um, radio show that's Monday through Friday. Uh, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, call the control factor. And it's funny that you bring this topic up because last Friday we did a, an entire hour based uh, uh, on um, the privacy invasion using Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg. And mm -hmm. what a lot of people don't realize is that um, when Zuckerberg got his initial financing to form Facebook, it came from in two phases. Um, the first round of financing came from you know, some computer companies who were pretty well on the up and up and uh, not very threatening. Now, the second phase of financing to create Facebook came from a company called NQTEL. NQTEL is a venture capital uh, company that is owned and operated by our CIA. Hmm. Uh, so, you know, it, it, that should tell you something about what's happening to the, as you said, the information that's being stored on servers. Now, if you look at the privacy statement of Facebook, uh, which most people don't read, you know, you put on all your information, you're anxious to get on and load your pictures and, and start making friends on Facebook, that you don't truly read the privacy statement. The privacy statement with Facebook clearly states that any, any blogs you put on there, any pictures you um, upload into the system, become the property of Facebook and, and can be used in any fashion they deem um, necessary. Uh, well, now, it does say that depending on your privacy settings, um, that can happen. But most people don't pay a lot of attention to their privacy settings except for only allowing people they choose as friends to come on. But any of the information you put on Facebook can be used uh, in other avenues. Um, at MIT, uh, we even had a, a professor who um, did some statistical, statistical surveys showing that most people use uh, and most uh, internet providers and a lot of websites will ask you for the last four digits of your social security number uh, in the states. You know, our, the social security number is the one identifying number that every American has. Mm -hmm. right? uh, and it opens up everything, your finances, your personal history, your medical history. It's everything's based on uh, your social security number. Well, it, uh, it has um, three numbers, two numbers, and then four numbers separated by dashes. Well, most websites will ask for your last four digits of your social security number as an identifier. This um, professor at MIT showed that by perusing the internet, by doing Google searches, by looking at your Facebook information, by looking at your purchasing information, that if you know the last four digits uh, of the social security number of an individual, that with 70% accuracy, based on your birth date on Facebook, 
uh, your, you know, the area of the country that you live in based on other information that you've shared about yourself or friends have shared about you. 